Hello and welcome everybody to another video from Joggler66 from Hour of the Truth called The Jesuits and the Protocols of Zion. I'm dealing with the second chapter of the book Behind the Dictators by Leo Herbert Lehman from 1942. And that deals with one of the biggest deceptions that is put in the shoes of the Jews all over the world that we know the so-called Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion. And you will learn a little bit about the um, origin of this paper here in my reading and of course I advise you all to do your own research and when you do that you have to do something that the author doesn't mention here, so I will mention that right now. And you have to check Jesuit Father Abbe Baruel and you write this name A-B-B-E B-A-R-R-U-E-L <coughs> Abbe Baruel and the real origins of the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion. I will put in the description box of this video a link to a video web, uh, to a website that I can very highly recommend spirituallysmart.com and the articles on the protocols given there. And that is a start for your own research. For the rest, the author deals a lot with points that attribute the foundation of the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion, of course, to the Jesuit order, the Society of Jesus. And there is no doubt that it comes from them, but his chapter on the Protocols of Zion is not concluding in that way, so I advise everybody to do his own research. In the meantime, I will start reading Chapter 2 of Behind the Dictators. It is admitted by all intelligent people that the so-called protocols of the wise men of Zion are criminal forgeries and could never have been written either by a group of Jews or Freemasons. Yet their authorship remains unknown. So this is what the author said and I tell you it is not unknown. It is Jesuit father Abbe Baruel who wrote these. The amazing part of it is that this fantastic fraud has succeeded in its planned objective, and that is absolutely true. The ousting of all Judaic Masonic influence in Central Europe by methods that will bring a blush to the cheek of a Torquemada. Well, therefore, of course, you have to know who Torquemada was, and we are speaking about Thomas de Torquemada, or Thomas of Torquemada, if you pronounce it in the English way, who lived between 1420 and uh, 1498. He was a Spanish Dominican and we all know that the Dominicans were charged with the Inquisition. He was a Spanish Dominican friar and the first Grand Inquisitor in Spain's movements to force Roman Catholicism upon its populace in the late 1500s, otherwise known as the Spanish Inquisition. And I will also provide you a link uh, where you can read in Wikipedia on who Thomas de Torquemada or Thomas of Torquemada was. The contents of all these alleged protocols are well enough known and have been broadcast by Nazi fascist and Roman Catholic agents in every country as verbatim reports, process verbaux, as you say in English. Uh, sorry, <laughs> as you say in French, verbatim re reports, that's process verbaux in French, of secret conferences at which certain Jewish leaders drew up plans for the formation of an invisible world government. With the help of Masonic lodges and the liberal, democratic, socialist and communist parties, these quote-unquote elders of Zion are said to have conspired for the overthrow of all non-Jewish governments and to destroy all religions other than Judaism. Every despicable means to weaken Christian institutions is set forth by the imaginary leaders of this vast conspiracy. Well, <clears throat> I'd like to turn you to a video series of two and a half hours um, that I made on the subject of the Ten Satanic Commandments coming out of the United Nations, written by Alice Bailey of Lucis, or former known as Lucifer's Trust, a up to today official publishing company of the United Nations. And because the United Nations was founded by Catholics and not by Jews, and Papal Knights and not by Jewish Masons, like the Knights of Malta, you know that again here is the Antichrist of the Bible, the author. 
from the ten satanic commandments I'm talking about, about the externalization of the hierarchy. Their videos are worth watching and you can find them in the playlist Nothing But The Truth under the name Externalization of the Hierarchy. And I will provide the links in the description box of this video also. And then compare <coughs> what we are talking about in this, I think altogether it's about five hours that you can uh, listen to it. Um, there you can see how this so-called plans of these so-called learned elders of Zion are exactly the same that come out of the Theosophical Society. And the Theosophical Society is not Jewish. And the Roman Catholic Church is not Jewish. Yeah? And they founded the United Nations through their papal knighthoods. Okay? But the author continues, all this is to be accomplished principally by means of the Masonic orders throughout the world as the blind dupes and willing tools of this alleged super-imperialism of the Jews. Credit is claimed for the Jews in having instigated practically all revolutionary movements on the past century, meaning the 19th century, assassination of rulers and heads of states, all the wars, civil, racial and international, and all the upheavals in and throughout the nations, from the Protestant Reformation to the economic conditions that resulted in our business depression, talking about 1929 in this case. Behind it all there is pictured the cold calculation, the unscrupulous cunning and murderous fanaticism of these so-called elders of Zion. Protocol 1 tells of a vast army of spies and secret agents, well supplied with funds, who bore from within and create dissension, the dissension and revolution in all countries. Well, that reminds me very much of the oath of the Jesuits. Eh? Support of anarchist, communist and socialist movements for the destruction of Christian civilization is outlined in Protocol 3. Also the debasement and ruin of the currency system, leading to a worldwide economic crisis. Universal war against any nation or group of nations which fails to respond is planned in Protocol 7. Protocol 10 contains particulars how all mor morality is to be undermined and leading statesmen blackmailed, compromised and calumniated in order to force them to serve the ends of the conspirators. The secret conclave at which these monstrous plans were purported to have been drawn up is said to have been held under the auspices of quote, one of the most influential and most highly initiated leaders of Freemasonry. Unquote. They are also said to have been quote, signed by representatives of Zion of the 33rd degree. Unquote. No group or organization could ever be as evil and satanic as these Judaic Masonic elders of Zion picture themselves to be. They are the apotheosis of the Antichrist and could have been conjured up only by theological minds imbued with the fearful expectation of the eventual coming of an Antichrist. Yeah? The eventual coming of an Antichrist? Here, of course, we have the denial of the Antichrist being the papacy all along. It screams deception from the get-go. And you know who is the master of deception, right? Satan. He does not care which side you take as long as you do not take the side of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It must be admitted, the author continues, that there is a certain similarity between this revolutionary plan of action and the Bolshevist program that followed the assassination of the Tsar of Russia in the overthrow of the Kerensky regime. But of the 17 members of the Council of the People's Commissars of the Soviet government at that time, only one, Trotsky, was a Jew, and the others were all Jesuitical educated. Research that for yourself. Neither have the Masons ever been uh, the least bit influential in Russia, either under Tsar or the Soviets. A worldwide economic depression also has since happened, somewhat similar to that allegedly planned by the elders of Zion. By no means, however, have the Jews and Masons ever so completely controlled the world's finances. They suffered as much as others as a result of the economic debacle in 1929. And you know who was 
um, responsible for that economic debacle in 1929? The one who controls the money. And then you point, of course, to the Rothschilds, who are Jews. And forget to mention that even the Judaic Encyclopedia says the Rothschilds are the guardians of the Vatican treasure. And then you look up the Rothschilds on the internet and you see Maya Amsel Rothschild and many, 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 many others of the Rothschild family being members of papal knight orders. Knights of St. John, Knights of St. Gregory, Knights of Malta, etc., etc., etc. And they are the Rothschilds, the war bankers for the Vatican and not the Jewish conspiracy, as you want to call it. The Nazi fascists who have successfully exploited these protocols to their great advantage, because they absolutely could use this Jewish conspiracy to point to the German people and to the whole world, look, it's the Jews and that's why we have to get rid of them. Of course, and since you know from me reading um, not only chapter 1 here, but also uh, Hour of the Truth, episode 47, this letter from Daryl Eberhardt, you understand that the Roman Catholic Church has been the biggest persecutor of the Jews through the centuries. Yeah. So when they propose to the whole world that the Jews are that bad and that the Jews are the enemy and everybody hates the Jews, what does the Roman Catholic Church achieve with that? That everybody goes after the Jews, right? And nobody looks to Rome, where the Pope sits in his white dress and his fancy hat and rubs his hands and laughs at the people who do not understand Scripture. Because if you understand Scripture, I can even save myself reading this whole book. Then you know it is not, it is never the people they put in front, it is always Rome, it is always the papacy who holds all the wires to which the puppets dance. But anyway, the Nazi fascists who have successfully exploited these protocols to their great advantage and who have used these criminal forgeries to attain their primary objective might well be accused of their authorship. But their publication antedated the rise of fascism by a quarter of a century when Hitler and Mussolini were youngsters learning their multiplication tables at school and Franco babbling his Hail Marys at his mother's knee. Now, authorship of an anonymous document is best discovered from the document itself, by the cause it favors and by the enemies it depicts. These will appear even if placed in reverse. A clear sample of this can be seen from such an analysis of a part of these Protocols of Zion which I have before me. It is a reprint from the Catholic Gazette on February 1936, a monthly publication of the Catholic Missionary Society of London, England. <laughs> Just ask myself, why in the world would a Catholic Gazette from the Catholic Missionary Society of London print the Protocols of the Elders of Zion? What has a Catholic Church that preaches love and forgiveness and charity all over to do with stir up hatred by people who read this and they know that they do that because they are the masters of learning against learning and of ratio studiorum. Space limits permit the quotation of only parts of these nefarious documents. So I'm of course not going to read all of this, but only this little part that Lehman put in the book here. It's a quote and it's always <coughs> put in little pieces. So there comes a point, point, point at the end. I don't read this point, point, point. You can do that for yourself because the 
download link for this book as a free PDF from the internet is provided in the description box of the video. You can read that along. I will just read that part that he wrote here. So, the Judaic Masonic conspirators are speaking. Quote, as long as there remains among the Gentiles any moral conception of the social order, and until all faith, patriotism and dignity are uprooted, our reign over the world shall not come. We have still a long way to go before we can overthrow our main opponent, the Roman Catholic Church. We must always bear in mind that the Roman Catholic Church is the only institution which has stood and which will, as long as it remains in existence, stand in our way. The Roman Catholic Church, with her methodical work and her edifying and moral teachings, will always keep her children in such a state of mind as to make them too self-respecting to yield to our domination and to bow down and to bow before our future King of Israel. <laughs> that is why we have been striving to discover the best way of shaking the Catholic Church to her very foundations. We have blackened the Catholic Church with the most ignominious calumnies. We have stained her history and disgraced even her noblest activities. I wonder what those might be b. Noble activities of the Roman Catholic Church, the synagogue of Satan, the seat of the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, noblest activities? Hmm. Okay. We have imputed to her the wrongs of her enemies and we have br thus brought these latter to stand more closely by our side. We have turned her clergy into objects of hatred and ridicule. We have subjected them to the contempt of the crowd. We have caused the practice of the Catholic religion to be considered out of date and a mere waste of time. One of the many triumphs of our Freemasonry is that those Gentiles who become members of our lodges should never suspect that we are using them to build their own jails upon those whose terraces we shall erect the throne of our universal King of Israel. I just have to interrupt here. Our universal King of Israel. What is another word for universal? Catholic, huh? So the Jews are looking for a universal king of Israel? Really? Are they waiting for Jesus Christ? Well, here's some news. Jesus Christ has come about 2,000 years ago and he died on the cross for the forgiveness also of your sins. So there is no future king for you to come to erect a worldly kingdom as you wanted Jesus Christ to do already 2,000 years ago but because you didn't understand that his kingdom was not of this world. But continuing, so far we have considered our strategy and our attacks upon the Catholic Church from the outside. Let us now explain how we have gone further in our work to hasten the ruin of the Roman Catholic Church and how we have brought even some of her clergy to become pioneers of our cause. We have induced some of our children to join the Catholic body with the explicit intimation that they should work in a still more efficient way for the disintegration of the Roman Catholic Church. We are the fathers of all revolutions, even of those which sometimes happen to turn against us. So maybe they are saying that they are also the instigators of the Holocaust? We are the supreme masters of peace and war. We can boast of being the creators of the Reformation. Calvin was one of our children. He was of Jewish descent and was entrusted by Jewish authority and encouraged with Jewish finance to draft his scheme in the Reformation. Martin Luther yielded to the influence of his Jewish friends and again by Jewish authority and with Jewish finance his plots against the Roman Catholic Church met with success. Have you already stopped with laughing or can I continue reading? <laughs> 
Thanks to our propaganda, to our theories of liberalism and to our misinterpretations of freedom, the minds of many among the Gentiles were ready to welcome the Reformation. They separated from the Church to fall into our snare. Really? And thus the Catholic Church has been sensibly weakened and her authority over the kings of the Gentiles has been reduced almost to naught. We are grateful to Protestants for their loyalty to our wishes, although most of them are, in the sincerity of their faith, unaware of their loyalty to us. France, with her Masonic government, is under our thumb. England, in her dependence upon our finance, is under our heel. And in her Protestantism is our hope for the destruction of the Roman Catholic Church. Well, let me ask you, where is that Protestantism of England today? England is as Catholic as is the United States of America. Okay? So, that didn't work. Spain and Mexico, they continue, are but toys in our hand. And many other countries, including the United States of America, have already fallen before our scheming. Likewise, as regards our diplomatic plans and the power of our secret societies, there is no organization to equal us. The Jesuits are the only ones to compare with us, but we have succeeded in discrediting them, for they are a visible organization, whereas we are safely hidden under cover of our secret societies. But the Roman Catholic Church is still alive. We must destroy her without the least delay and without the slightest mercy. Let us intensify our activities in poisoning the morality of the Gentiles. Let us spread the spirit of revolution in the minds of the people. They must be made to despise patriotism and the love of family, to consider their faith as a humbug. Let us make it impossible for Christians outside the Catholic Church to be reunited to that Church, otherwise the greatest obstruction to our domination will be strengthened and all our work undone. Let us remember that as long as there still remain active enemies of the Catholic Church we may hope to become masters of the world, and let us remember always that the future Jewish King will never reign in the world before the Pope in Rome is dethroned. When the time comes and the power of the Pope shall at last be broken, the fingers of an invisible hand will call the attention of the masses of the people to the court of the sovereign pontiff to let them know that we have completely undermined the power of the papacy. The King of the Jews will then be the real Pope and the father of the Jewish world church." Unquote. Well, this last sentence, the King of the Jews will then be the real Pope and the father of the Jewish World Church, that goes hand in hand with the plan of the Jesuits by playing their futuristical theater of, oh, the Pope is not the Antichrist, the Pope is not the Antichrist, the Antichrist is coming in the end of time, seven years before Jesus Christ returns, and he probably will be a Jew. You see how this all plays together? By taking the spotlight of the papacy as being the biblical, historical and prophetic antichrist, even here this conspiracy of the so-called learned elders of Zion plays hand in hand with the conspiracy of the Jesuits. And it's all a conspiracy against the body of Christ, against us, against the Bible, against Bible-believing, Jesus-following Christians. So it doesn't matter what side you're on, Catholic or Jewish, you're always on the side of the losers. And the one calls the other here the synagogue of Satan. But okay, when all this is placed in reverse, the author says, then the following appears. Quote, The Catholic Church is the only upholder of morality, the social order, faith, patriotism and dignity. The Catholic Church is the only institution which has stood and which will always stand in the way of Antichrist. The Catholic Church is the great exemplar of methodical work 
edifying and moral teachings. She always keeps her children self-respecting and will never bow to satanic allurements. Only when Catholics become ashamed of professing the precepts of the Church and obeying its commands shall we have the spread of revolt and false, false liberalism. The Catholic Church has been blackened by the most enigmous calumnies. Her history has been stained and her noblest activities disgraced. The practices of the Catholic Church are not out of date or a mere waste of time. Freemasonry is allied with Satan against the Catholic Church. Not all priests are to be trusted. Liberal Catholic priests only serve the work of the devil. The Reformation was the work of evil conspirators. Calvin and Luther were financed by them to overthrow the Roman Catholic Church. Freedom and liberty are mere representations of good. Protestants have unwittingly helped to bring all the evils into our present world. Protestant England claims to destroy the Catholic Church. All that may happen in Spain and Mexico is a part of a plot against the Roman Catholic religion. The Jesuits are not an underhand organization, but all they do is open and above board. The Jesuits are the only organization, however, who can defeat the force of evil in that world. Finally, as long as the Pope remains on his throne in Rome, the world is safe. Unquote. Now, <laughs> we're analyzing this a little bit right now, because this... What I've just read is exactly what is taught in all Catholic schools. Every retreat and mission given to priests and lay people begins with St. Ignatius' picture of the two camps, the Catholic Church led by God on the one hill and a combination of Protestants, Jews, Masons, Communists, Socialists and Atheists on the other, led by Satan. And all of this is to be found again in Father Coughlin's Social Justice magazine. You remember him from me reading the first chapter of this book. Otherwise, look him up again. In its issue on February 5th, 1940, for instance, he, reiter he reiterates that the Catholic Church is, quote, the ideal Christian front, unquote, and proclaims that all those opposed to, or not with, it belongs to anti-Christian groups, which will soon, quote, appear incarnated in the person of Antichrist himself, unquote. He says that, quote, in the same issue, a, a special correspondent of his magazine in Rome writes an article that the only hope for Christian Europe lies in Rome, and that Europe can be saved only by the resur resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire, that England who more than any other country now represents the neo-Judaic neo anti-Catholic sp Catholic spirit, will be destroyed by Germany and Italy. In another part of this issue, liberal Catholic priests like, Mons uh, priests like Monsignor John A. Ryan are called hireling clergy, paid by left-wing revolutionary groups. Towards the end is a trick questionnaire which implies 20 answers aimed to secure a poll from its readers, which will be condemnatory of democracy. Although first published in Russia 1903, the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion had their origin in France and date from the Dreyfus Affair. Uh, that's not correct. It dated even much before that because, you know, the Dreyfus Affair was 1894 of which the Jesuits, as we learned in chapter 1, were the chief instigators. The Jesuits were the instigators and not the Jews. They were planned also first to take effect in France by the overthrow of the Judaic Masonic government of the French Republic. But the discovery of the gigantic fraud of Leo Texel, who had been openly supported by the Jesuits, the concluding of the Franco-Russian alliance along with the Vatican's difficulties with the French government at that time, made it more opportune to have them appear first in Russia. These protocols of supposedly Jewish leaders are not the first documents of their kind fabricated by the Jesuits, by the way. For over a hundred years before these protocols appeared, 
the Jesuits had continued to make use of a similar fraud called the Secrets of the Elders of Bourgfontaine against Jansenism. An anti-Jesuit French Catholic movement among the secular clergy. The analogy between the two forgeries is perfect. The secret assemblage in the forest of Bourgfontaine, the plan of the conspirators to destroy the papacy and establish religious tolerance among all nations, the alleged plot against throne and altar, and the setting up of a world government in opposition to the Catholic Church. There is the same dramatization of the negative pole of the historic evolution of the world in order to bring out, by contrast, the positive Christian, meaning Catholic pole, not Christian, Christian read Roman Catholic pole, around which all conservative forces, the monarchy, the aristocracy, the army, the clergy, must gather to save the world from Satan's onslaught. You know? Everyone who speaks bad about the Roman Catholic Church is a disciple of Satan in their eyes, because it is Satan's onslaught on, of course, the vicar of Christ here on earth, who is actually the Antichrist himself. But how can you, being Satan, turn everybody away from you when you point at everybody else who is Satan and not you? Because you, as Satan, Disguise yourself as an angel of light, as it is written in the Bible. So you point to every other denomination, to every other belief system, to every other organization, that they are of Satan, and not yourself. And by that, all eyes are off of Rome. And that's exactly what they want. Don't look at Rome. Don't look at Rome. Nothing to see here. You know that when you come to a crime scene? Keep on going. Nothing to see here. Go further. You have no business with this. You turn to Rome, they say exactly the same. Nothing's happening here. We are just a church. We are just doing charity. And we are just proclaiming the word of Christ. What they don't tell you is that their Christ is not the Christ of the Bible, but the Tammuz of Babylon. Anyway, another little paragraph and then the chapter 2 is already done. Analyzing therefore the ends to be attained by these protocols of Zion, the means to be employed, the forces depicted as evil and those to be considered good, we must reach the conclusion that only to those whose objectives these forgeries were clearly intended to serve can their authorship be attributed. The author leaves the conclusion to you, I tell you, it's the Society of Jesus. It's the Jesuits, it's the Roman Catholic Church itself. If you people not of yourself start hating the Jews who is the enemy of the Roman Catholic Church from the get-go, then they will invent every form of conspiracy that you will turn against the Jews. And that's what the forgery of the learned elders of the protocols of the learned elders of Zion, in fact, was all about. See through the deception. Or they play you like a football from the left field to the right field. Get through the deception. Get your Bible. Study the Word of God and learn who really is the Antichrist. And by this, with no regard of what human life soever, will destroy every man on earth. That is his plan. Because mankind is his enemy. He, Satan, does not care for us. But Jesus Christ cares for us. And he gives us the gift of free salvation. Salvation is by faith alone, through the grace of God. Praise the Lord. Read your Bible and study history, like, for example, this book. 
This was Chapter 2 of Behind the Dictators on the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion from Jogla 66, Hour of the Truth. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and until next time, God bless you all and bye-bye.